hello to the five people still subscribed to this channel. Um, today I'm going to release my bi-yearly tutorial on Unity and it is in regards to this little background effect you see here on this quite frankly stunning mobile game known as Hexagon available on Google Play Store now. You'll see it's just a quite a simple repeating pattern with this little scanning line going up it and as you move it's parented to the camera or a child of the camera and it follows it without needing to uh, tile or do any of that stuff so it's tiles on its own and if I make it bigger or smaller you'll notice that it doesn't actually matter why is this gone all blurry I think I press stopped halfway through the death effect but yeah you'll notice that the uh, effect remains intact so it doesn't matter how you move or what happens there all right so let's get into it so the effect is made up of three parts there's the scanning line the actual background that the scanning line follows and the color so you can look at each of those in turn uh, you'll see that the color does change and it kind of goes through a hue over a long period of time Blah, 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 etc. The second part is the scanning line, as I said, or the, just the normal background lines. So if we plug these into there, you'll see that. And then finally, it's very faint here, but obviously it's overlaid. It's added on top, so it's a bit more noticeable. And then the scanning line is there. So if we save that, you'll see the actual just the scanning line go up again very faint but when it's all added together it comes out looking quite cool i think for this you need the uh, shader lab plugin which i'm not sure if it's included on newer versions i'm using 20 uh, 22 .3, .4. Uh, in the package manager you can go your shader graph and make sure you have this procedural patterns procedural procedural patterns installed so good at English. This will allow us to do things like the hexagon and the hex lattice, which we're using here to get the shape. So 2D object, sprite, square. I'll set this to be 20 by 20. And I want it behind everything else, which it should be anyway. And yeah, we'll get to work on that. So create, shader graph, URP and we want an unlit shader graph for sprites. We'll just call this sky uh, shader underscore tutorial and we'll create a little material from that. Create material in the sky mat underscore tutorial. We'll assign that. Okay, so that is looking just like a gray background as we'd expect. And to begin with, this is what it is. So it's basically going to go camera, create new, create new node, camera. And we want this because it'll give us the Y position of the object. So as you saw, um, it changed colors based on the location. So as you get higher, it'll, is that going to work? Yep. As you get higher, it'll change more and more. We can also add a few variables in here so things like the world like we can have a float for the world transition i'm going to spell this terribly transition transit ion strength i think that's how you spell that but if, if it's not it's no big deal we'll get one for the world transition strength we'll set that to be about 0.5 and we'll get one for the screen transition strength we'll set that to be around 40 and essentially these will affect the gradient so how strong the gradient is the screen transition will say how much of a gradient is there from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen and the world transition strength will say how much does that entire gradient change over time as you get higher and higher in the scene so we'll take the green rgb xyz so this will be the y-axis and we'll 
multiply that uh, doesn't matter if it's A or B but we'll multiply that by the world transition strength so the higher the camera by a factor of the world transition strength it'll change the gradient and then we'll get the actual screen position as a new node and we'll use that to create the color screen position and we'll we can minimize all these things so they're not really necessary I hope I'm not rambling too much we'll split this again to get the G X Y Z so we'll get the Y coordinate of the screen position as well and we'll multiply that Oops, shit, I've done B. I don't want B. Again, it doesn't make a difference, but yeah. I'll multiply that by the screen transition. So you'll see this is the gradient, and now we'll change it based on our own uh, whatever factor we want. So I've gone with 40 here, and you're obviously free to experiment, see whatever you like. And then we'll add these two together. Add A, blah, 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 doop, blah, boom. So now we've added these two together, that's pretty much all you need to get to the actual original place we were at first. The only addition we actually need is a colour. So you also need a colour just to um, work with a sprite renderer usually, but I don't think you need it always. For example, I don't have a main texture component and it'll, you'll get a warning saying, oh, you need if you're using a sprite renderer, you need a main texture. So we're going to run it into this hue node, so it'll get this, get the hue, get the color, the base color that we set in, and then it'll offset that by whatever value we want. And obviously, the value will change based on where on the screen and the Y position of the camera overall. And that's what we'll offset that hue by. So it can be a number of colors, uh, which allows me to have each level have its own sort of base color, and you sort of have a theme around that so you'll see when we played it it was green the first level's blue but I didn't show that and we'll run that into the fragment shader and press apply uh, we haven't actually set a color yet I'm just gonna copy the color I have here a to b3 blah 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 and then we're gonna press save asset and there we go so it's simple as that just whack the mic there it's as simple as that to set the main component of the color up and you'll see again as you go higher the gradient changes so this is quite useful just in general even you can use this for any game any sort of bounce to get higher sort of game but that alone's a bit not boring but not all too interesting it'll work but you want a bit of variation so first things first we're going to add that little hex lattice uh, but before we want to do that, we want to make it so we can scale the entire thing. Because, for example, if I just go create node hex lattice, um, I could put all kinds of things in here. I'm going to leave it 0.1, and I think I'll put this to 0.1 as well. I'm just setting all the settings that as they were before. Tiling, 10 by 10, whatever. Um, we'll st I'll just show you what it looks like now. I think I can even just plug this straight in. I press save asset yep so you'll see now we have the hex lattice set up but if I scale this you'll notice that it's affected by both the position and the scale of the object we don't want that we want it to be totally independent of where you are and uh, the scale of it so you can just have the entire thing just cover the background of the camera and just be done with it you don't have to worry about actually scaling it on that sense and the way we're going to do that is we're going to take an object node and this takes in the values of the object so for example the square that we've applied this material to and we're going to take the scale of that square and that's what we're going to manipulate it by so again we're going to split this and we're going to take out the uh what am i taking out the r and the g so x and y we don't need the z-axis obviously and we're going to put that into a vector 2 uh, vector 2, we want this R to be the X, we want Y to be the G. So this will take the scale and change it into a vector 2 for us. And then we're going to multiply this by a custom value, which we'll let the user set again. We're going to say uh, vector 2 tiling. 
and I think I have it set to I think I have it set a bit high there I think it should be 0.8 and 1 I think that's the best value I found and we'll bring this down here and we'll set that to multiply by that and that will now be the tiling uh, let me see what that looks like save asset and yeah that looks pretty good so decent values and now you'll also notice that when we change it it doesn't matter where the thing is we still get differences as this moves but that's actually not really an issue because we're moving it with the camera and now we'll actually work on using this so first thing you'll notice is that the hexes are white and the background line is black that's not what we want we want to add it on top so we're going to do a one minus to invert this one minus and then we're going to multiply this just by a flat value and we're going to say 0.5 0 0.05 even oh, 0.05 because we want it to be very light very dim and then we will take these two and we will add them together we'll add the color to the tiling the color to the tiling texture and if we output that now and save you'll see we get a nice little quite subtle background effect actually before we add the um, scanning line I feel like we should give the op the option to move the background with it because it can feel a bit flat if it's just totally off I feel like adding a slight parallax might help so I think I'll show you how to do that now I was just messing with it off camera so we want to go into that hex lattice and add a uh, da, 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 vector 2 for the offset and then we can just feed the offset straight into here and that'll just basically change the offset of the uh, hex lattice based on what we feed into it in this case the camera position so as you go higher or just as you move you will be able to I feel like there's a way to add like nodes no to make it look look a bit better but never mind we're gonna put this into a multiply and you'll see if we just do it by one you'll see the effect is one to one Very weird. you'll notice that when I move the player and therefore the camera because the camera is such the player well that's not exactly true it kind of moves up at a steady rate but you'll see that the background now moves on its own and we can actually change this ourselves if we go into here we can add another float for I'll just call it parallax or I'll just call it para I should call it parallax really doing half names is terrible terrible practice even if it is just for a tutorial parallax two L's parallax apparently uh, spelling isn't terrible for me so <laughs> we'll go parallax and multiply that by a default of zero so it's as it was initially please enjoy this quick 10 second ad for above the stars battle wave after wave of enemies while upgrading your defenses all in the hopes of finding a new home for humanity above the stars I'll be making it free so check it out at the links below and you'll see that it moves slightly we don't want it all the way up to one because that's a bit much but maybe 0.5 actually I missed it there so if you move it a little bit you can kind of give the effect that it's off in the distance because obviously the background's moving less than the foreground so now it seems like the background's quite far away and yeah I think that looks good so we'll leave that as is I'm going to do one more thing quickly which you won't have to do and that's add this custom camera colour script I have so in case you're curious as to what the camera colour script does this is basically um, called on awake and it just gets a, um, the component the renderer component and it sets it based on the color we pass in and that's just called by the game level manager so you'll see I have a bunch of colors set up here and that's how it passes in a bunch of HDR colors so now it looks a bit more normal but yeah with that out of the way we'll get working on the scan line which is easy enough we don't actually have to add any sort of 
parallaxing to that because it's just based on time. And what we're going to do is start off with a time node, as I said. And we're just going to get the flat time and we're going to multiply this by, and you know, the more, uh, I will say scan speed. And originally I have that set to minus 0.2. So it goes up, but again, you can set this to whatever you like. I want it faster, I want it slower, going, I want it going the other direction. The world is your oyster. We're going to pass this into the offset of a tiling and offset. Tiling and offset, offset. We can leave the UV and the tiling alone. I feel like I'm explaining that terribly. It might be easier if I just, if I, if I split this. And I'll show you the Y value of this, you'll see what it looks like. I feel like this is a good thing to do when you just put your past this thing straight into it. So there you go. You'll see the very top is white and the very bottom is black. And even if we scale it, it's based on the UVs of the items itself. So it's, it also applies for the other axes, but obviously we've split G, which is the Y axis, but you can see it piled on here, RGB, XYZ as I said, and yeah, we're gonna take this and put that there. I wonder what that looks like if I just get the time asset and just do that, nothing. Interesting, always curious. <laughs> um, so we split that and we put it into a fraction. Okay, we put that into a fraction, which is essentially like, um, I guess the opposite, similar to modular maybe I don't know it gives you the fraction part basically it gives you the decimal so uh, the time is constantly ticking up it's going from it starts at zero goes higher and higher and higher it just constantly ticks up but if we get the fraction we'll just get the part that goes from zero to one so it'll go 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 and then it'll go instead of going 0 0.91 it'll go 0 0.90 then 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 so 5.5 will return us 0.5 essentially so that's why you see this sort of scanning line going up all the way in reality time is probably at a thousand seconds right now or whatever but we're just getting the thousand point two seconds 0 0.3 0 0.8 point nine until it cycles back that's probably the most verbose way someone's ever described that anyway we're going to run that into a power uh how do i explain the power it's just it's just it's just power, <laughs> you know, if you if you square something, if you put it to the power of 10, there you go, that's what it is. So you'll see one to the power of 10 is one, uh, but 0.5 to the power of 10 is a lot lower because you're trying times in 0.5 by 0.5, etc. So dark points get darker essentially. And if there was a value above one, bright points would get brighter, but obviously one to the power of uh, any higher power is still just gonna be one. And lower power maybe? One to the power of a half is still a one, I guess? Surely, if it goes the other way. Anyway, we're gonna multiply this. How long have we been going on for? 23 minutes for this simple tutorial. It has been a minute. We're gonna multiply this by the output of this node. And see, so now it will follow this hex line instead of just doing a flat scan line. And finally, we're gonna multiply this by just a flat value, I'm not gonna to bother to make a, uh, a thing for this, I'm just gonna say 0.1. Again, you could, if you wanna experiment, you could make another value for what you want to multiply that by. But instead, I'm just gonna put this straight into an add. Beesh, boosh, bang, boom. Could probably organize this a bit better, the lines are, you know, like, not a fan of all that. Move this back there. But yeah, we'll save that. And you'll see now that we have the scan line fully working. So it goes up and if we play here, and you can see it has different colors based on, again, I'm assigning it by via code. You could just assign it in the material like this, like so. And I have a different one for each level. 
So this one's kind of a orangey color. And yeah, you'll see the line go up and it all moves as we go with it at a certain scale. I, uh, I, don't, I don't know, whichever one you like. I like this kind of 0.5 so it moves slightly, but yeah, you kind of get an understanding of how far back it is. I think even if it doesn't move at all, it looks quite nice. Then it looks like a background that's way, way in the background and that are tiny movements that affect it. But there you go. I hope this helped and check out Hexagon on the Play Store.